And now welcome to America's Game of the Week here in Week 13 as we battle in the NFC South. The Carolina Panthers know that they have already clinched the division. The third straight year they are division champions, but right now in 2015, Cam Newton and company looking at an undefeated season. The only team left in the NFL that does not have a loss. Carolina won the toss. They defer the Saints start this day with the football. Glad you're with us today on Fox. Drew Brees and company will start at the 20. And so, Troy, I know that the Saints started this season one and four. They won three. Now they've lost three. These are the numbers at home for Drew Brees. No team wants to come in here and play the Saints on their home turf. Yeah, especially when you're playing within your division. This is a game in week three in which Drew Brees did not play. Luke McCown was the starting quarterback that game. This game, that game anyway, came down to the wire, and these two teams know each other very well. Going to start with a throw, or at least that's the plan, and to the near sideline, it's dropped by Brandon Cooks. And the matchup to watch during the course of the day will be number 10, Brandon Cooks, against number 24, Josh Norman, one of the best corners in the league. He's joined Cooks is by Ingram, Coleman, Watson's had a huge year at tight end, and Andrus Pete, the first-round pick, makes the start at left guard again. And a little change there at right guard. Jari Evans was a game-day decision. They determined he could not go, and so Tim Lolito had been a starter at left guard most of the season. He gets the nod there at right guard today. Second down and 10. Here's Ingram. He breaks loose. He's got a first down out across the 30, knocked down near the 34. A 14-yard gain by Mark Ingram, brought down by Coleman. Well, an excellent job, Zach Street. He makes a key block, as you're going to see on the middle linebacker, and then it opens up the hole for Mark Ingram, and that's what Sean Payton has been hoping to see, really. It's been inconsistent throughout the season. They came into the year wanting to run the football, haven't been as efficient as they would like. They know how important that is against an outstanding run defense in Carolina. A little movement before the snap, no flag. Here's Cooks. And a nice catch and run. Good for eight as Colin Jones makes the stop. And this defense is so good, it's centered around their guy in the middle, Luke Keekley. He's the best in the game. He's amazing. The, whole, the linebackers really are extremely fast. They pursue to the football. Hard to get out on the outside against them because of this team's speed. And as good as they've been all year, the last month, they have just smothered opposing offenses. On second down, pass is caught. Quick tackle made by Keekley on Ingram. And it depends on the forward progress they give Ingram as to whether it's a first down or not. It is a first down. There's Sean Payton. I don't know if people remember what Sean Payton has brought to this organization with that marriage that started in 2006. They went right to the NFC Championship game. They won it all in 2009. They've established the Saints as a force in the NFL. Peyton and Brees. But four and seven to start here today. A nice play made by Jared Allen. A gain of one as Ingram carries it. And then there is a gentleman on the other side by the name of Ron Rivera who his nickname may be Riverboat Ron, but he is about as steady a rock as there is on anybody's sideline. A little different personality between he and then Sean Payton, who we just showed. And you're right, Ron, he just maintains the ship. He's very even kill throughout the week, each and every week. And this team has responded to his style. Breeze, Spiller out of the backfield to target. Allen got his hand up and knocked it away. It'll bring up third down and nine for a Saints team that was good on third down coming into last week. But three for 12 on this down at Houston in their loss to the Texans. And one of the reasons why they struggled so much against the Texans was they found themselves in a lot in third and long like they're facing here. This is a difficult defense to move the football against. Extremely difficult to convert on these downs when you're not in manageable distances. And a false start makes it third and 14. False start, offense number 17, five-yard penalty. 
Third down. Out on the edge, it was the young receiver T.J. Graham who can really fly, and he will fly on out of the huddle after a false start on third and nine. So third and 14. As the Panthers had a lot of players up on the line of scrimmage, and they lined up before that false start, and they're back up. They bring four guys on the rush. Breeze finds his tight end. Watson, good play. As the tackle is made by Cortland Finnegan, his first week back. Signed off the street, hasn't played since last year, makes the tackle and forces fourth down. This is a matchup we're going to see a lot of here this afternoon with Josh Norman matching up on Brandon Cooks. That's what they did in that first meeting in week three. They do an excellent job of covering the receivers down the field. Breeze has no chance other than to drop it off. And a nice stop defensively by the Panthers. Two first downs on that first possession. Beautiful punt here by Morstead. But will it check up? And it does. Heads out of bounds near the five. They'll mark it at the six. And Morstead could not have done it much better. Here comes Cam in a scoreless first quarter. Today's game is sponsored by Southwest. Transparency, low fares, nothing to hide. Well, it's loud on America's Game of the Week, and Cam Newton will start. Not in the shotgun. From the six. Hands it off to Stewart. Good start. Jonathan Stewart gets nine for the guy who is number two in carries in the NFL. Number three in rushing yardage, and there's Greg Olson, the tight end, but he is the top target. For Cam Newton. Well, it sure is. And the tight ends have been a problem for this defense of the New Orleans Saints. And Greg Olson had an outstanding game the last time these two teams met. And like you said, that's the guy who Cam Newton looks to get the ball to. False start. Offense number 74. Five yard penalty. Second down. It's Brad Allen, our referee whose crew, just so you know, has called the second fewest fouls around the NFL here in 2015. Brad, in his second year, came straight from the ACC. He's in charge today. Makes it second and six. And off to Stewart running left. Brought down after a gain of about one. Kevin Williams on the tackle and the defense. They have really struggled at the linebacker level. And they have two rookie starting linebackers in Anthony and Kikaha. Uh, you know, I talk about some of the issues that they've had being able to slow down opposing teams' tight ends. A lot of that has been because of the revolving door at the outside linebacker position. Stephon Anthony. The rookie that you mentioned, he has started every game, but he himself has even gone through some growing pains. On third down and five, Newton was bothered on the throw, and the pass comes up short. Brown, the intended target. And it looked like Newton was at least grazed when he let that ball fly. Uh, they bring some pressure, as you're going to see, and they're able to affect Newton as he's trying to step up into the pocket. They want to get the ball down the field he gets grabbed and just unable to get it out there and so an outstanding job aided by the false start that backed him up but an excellent job by this defense getting off the field Northman punts it Murphy the rookie hauls it in inside the 45 but good starting field position for the Saints it may be four and seven, but they are at home playing a divisional rival and trying to knock off the undefeated Carolina Panthers. No score. Today's game is sponsored by Budweiser. Make a plan to make it home. Second possession for the Saints. No score. Starting at their own 49. And off to Ingram. Not much. Well, welcome you inside the broadcast booth for the first time today to prove that we're wearing ties. I'm Joe. That's Troy Aikman. And uh, it's going to be fun to watch Carolina. It's been fun already. 
in 2015. Every phase of the game's working for yeah. them. Well, this defense really is the one that sets the tone for this team, as we saw on Thanksgiving night, as, as well as they played. And then offensively, the only team in all of football that runs the ball more than they throw it. And then they like to take the shots, and that's something that New Orleans has struggled with defensively. Second and eight to drop. From longtime target, Drew Brees, Marcus Colston, brings up third down and eight. You know, Drew Brees coming off that tough performance last Sunday against the Houston Texans, failed to score a touchdown offensively for the first time this season. He completed less than 60% of his passes, but you know, he was excited not having faced this team earlier in the year. He's excited about this ball game today. He knows it's a challenge, but he likes the guys that he has up front. So changes along that offensive line, a little different cast of characters that he's had in previous years. Breeze, well protected, throw is high, but caught. This is Coleman, and Coleman with a nice catch and run. He's got a first down inside the 20. 31 yards on third down and long, and it started with a protection for Breeze. You're going to see Mark Ingram. He does a good job of recognizing it. It's right there to then pick up the blitz, and Breeze able to get enough time to get the ball out to Coleman, and that's one of the guys that... They were really looking forward to seeing him get some action here in this ball game today because Willie Sneed unable to go. Coleman a big target. He makes a nice play on the ball. A big game. Hand out to Ingram. You know, while you talk about an undefeated season for Carolina, and they've been terrific, they've had a couple of close calls, but they have shown their might in every phase of the game. Arizona's right behind them. Arizona, a winner today in St. Louis in just a walkover. And for the Cardinals now, their record goes to 10-2. and two. Well, I think, Joe, that when you look at this Carolina team and being undefeated, and you say, okay, if they were to win today and they lock up the division, and then how do they handle the rest of the year? The fact that Arizona's breathing down their neck, that'll give them a lot to play for the rest of the year. Second and six, end zone, touchdown, Watson! Coleman got him down there, and Watson gets him in there, and the first points belong to the Saints. What a year Benjamin Watson has had. It's a well-designed route. You're going to see by Ben Watson, and they run Colston through the middle, and that frees up Ben Watson then up the seam because the safety has to go with Colston. And then Watson, once he gets in behind that zone coverage, it gives Breeze a place to go with the football, and you're right. He has had an excellent year replacing Jimmy Graham. That is the first touchdown for the Saints in 20 drives. They've scored a total of 20 points the last two weeks combined, but a good fast start for Drew Brees against the Panthers up seven. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Dodge. By T-Mobile. Ditch your carrier and switch to the young carrier. And by Lowe's. Hurry in today for great winter savings. Great city of New Orleans, Louisiana. Aerial coverage provided by Nationwide inside. Rather uh, calm weekend for the group here in New Orleans. Proud of it. Proud of the guys and gals that uh, we work with, especially you. <laughs> Go 10. You wouldn't be so proud of him. Yeah. Tara Lavoro, he teared it up. Let's go down to the field and check in with Aaron Andrews. Joe, it doesn't take a genius to figure out the Saints are fired up about playing an undefeated Carolina Panthers team and a quarterback like Cam Newton. Let me show you another thing that fired them up. Cam Newton in pregame warm-ups, throwing balls, catching balls, even stretching where the Saints were warming up. He even kind of walked away from his team and flat out watched the intros of the Saints. I had a couple players say, we had a shot of espresso when before we wanted to play them. That was like a triple shot, watching him kind of play around in our end zone. He's having fun, no doubt about it. He's been all smiles as we play here in week 13 for the 11-0 Carolina Panthers. Dixon 
The tight end gets six. Well, it's been a good start for the New Orleans Saints. I mean, the defense on the previous possession were able to force a three and out. Offensively, they come down and they get a touchdown. And you know, we've seen Carolina win a lot of different ways, but the way they're built offensively, even though they have done it, they did it against Seattle earlier in the year, which I think was a defining game for them this season. The fact that New Orleans able to jump up on them early, I think, is is good certainly for New Orleans. And, Putting a little pressure on this team. Second and four over the middle. That's a fastball. And it's caught by Greg Olson. And that'll light up a radar gun. Got to Olson in a blink. Good for nine. Uh, you see Cam Newton. He, he doesn't take much off his ball, even when he's capable of doing so. He likes to line it in there. And Drew Olson, or Greg Olson, excuse me, he's able to make a nice catch on it. Among tight ends, the most catches in Carolina history for Olsen. That's his 54th catch of this season. Looked like Carolina was going to go into motion with Olsen out there at the end of the line of scrimmage, and the Saints came across, see how they figure out who it's against. Well, Remmers moved. I mean, great. Neutral zone infraction, number 78, defense. Five-yard penalty, first down. They get Bobby Richardson for coming across. He is one of a number of rookies that they have, five of them active up front on the defensive line for the Saints. Yeah, Bobby Richardson playing once they traded a king picks to the New England Patriots. Brings up first and five. Play action. There's a fastball picked off by Delvin Bro down the sideline and sliding down outside the 20. Second pick for number 40. Trying to force it into Ted Ginn. Ill-advised throw by Cam Newton. And the first pick in his last 89 pass attempts, it was never there. Well, Delvin Bro, he's playing press coverage. He just plays it beautifully, and he's in a great position. And that ball, you've got to be real careful if you're Cam Newton and that type of coverage. You've got to get it out to the sideline, and Bro makes a good jump on it. And an excellent job. His second interception of the season, his story is tremendous. Delvin Bro, the return was 22 yards to set up the Saints at the 20 up seven. Pass is incomplete for Hill. The second tight end on the roster. Delvin Bro is a guy who was all world growing up in this part of the country. He broke three vertebrae in his neck as a senior in high school, was hoping to play at LSU, was never cleared medically to play. So he ended up playing semi-pro ball, the CFL, the Saints sign him, and he's been one of their best defensive backs all year. He gets the early pick here. He's been a guy they've been able to count on all year. Here's Ingram. Not much. Latula lay on the tackle. Back to the line of scrimmage, third and ten. Well, this becomes a, a big possession, really, for both of these teams. I know you know, Sean Payton talked about it during the week, that if you look back at these matchups, the team that's been really good in the red zone, able to come away with touchdowns, has been the team that has won these games. Now, the offense gets the ball short field. This would be a huge win for this Carolina defense if they're able to force the Saints into a field goal attempt. Spiller in on third down. He gets it, and he is tackled immediately. What a good play by Davis. Thomas Davis, who's been through three ACL tears, has had a phenomenal year. Brings him down with no game. Well, they're both just so fast, he and Luke Keekley, that they read and recognize formations and how the play is developing. And you've really got to be on your game offensively to get anything past them. They try running a quick little pass underneath, and Thomas Davis recognizes it, makes a good open field tackle. 38-yard try by Kai Forbath. 
interception does not cost Carolina anything. It remains a 7 0 game. Saints on top on America's Game of the Week. There's been instability at the kicking position for the Saints. They started their camp with two guys, Hopkins and Hawker. Both are gone. Now Kai Forbath, who hit from 57 last week, misses from 38. Still a seven point game, and the handoff is to Stewart. And Stewart wrapped up after a gain of one. Back to the field goal. The snap was good. Out of the hands of Drescher, into the hands of Thomas Morstead. The hold, the tilt. But a block right by Forbath. Yeah, well, they had a great opportunity to go up two scores and to not be able to capitalize on the turnover. You know, big for Carolina. As you said, this Saints team has had issues with their kicking game all season long. And really, that, you play a team that's undefeated, you've got to be, you've got to take advantage of those type of opportunities. They barely got set. Handoff is to Stewart. He stood up again. And the ball is out. It's a live play. And no signal. Not one official has made a declarative statement as to whether this is a touchdown or not. Stephon Anthony. Here's a call. It's not down by contact. Fumble. Touchdown. Touchdown, Saints. A scoring play, it gets another look. There was indecision on a part of the officiating crew. And let's take another look and make sure they got it right. Well, we'll see whether or not Stewart was down. There's a lot of bodies in there and hard to tell. I mean, Stephon Anthony. Well, there's two pieces. Not only is Stewart down, but is Anthony down once he takes it out of the arms of Stewart, which happens right there. That's close. And then will Steph Anthony stay up before getting off the pile and heading to the end zone? They'll look at that, and we'll have the official call when we come back. After reviewing the play, the ruling on the field stands. What a good play by the rookie. Stephon Anthony. Mike Pereira, what did you see from Los Angeles? You like the call? I, I do because once you see Stewart hit the ground, the ball's out of the picture. So you really can't see when it's ripped away. And certainly the recovering player was not down on the ground. I think the officials did a very good job, by the way, in holding the whistles and not blowing the whistles to kill the play because then you could have never had a return for a touchdown. Yeah, that's right. They were all looking at each other. Nobody blew it dead. And Anthony gets the touchdown. Kikaha was right in the middle of it as well. The two rookie linebackers. Carolina had gone 34 possessions, Troy, without a turnover. And they've turned it over twice over the last three offensive snaps. That'll kill you. It's 14 nothing. Carolina had only fumbled the ball six times all year. That's the second fewest in the league. Behind Denver and Stewart gives it up. Yeah, well, that's what they've been doing so well is protecting the football and not beating themselves. Haven't turned it over in the last three games. and. This is a tough place to play when you allow this crowd to get into it. And this Seattle, or this New Orleans team is really gaining some confidence here in this first quarter with the way they're playing defensively. Carolina obviously on top, undefeated in the playoff picture. They would have the one seed as we play here in week 13. Then Arizona, they won easily today. Green Bay because of Minnesota's loss as they got thumped by Seattle. Seattle's playing great football. Russell Wilson is red hot. And combination with he and Doug Baldwin on fire. The Redskins lead the NFC East, which is a mess. The Giants blew a 20 to 10 lead late in that game and lost in overtime to the Jets. And Philadelphia's a game out. 
And you've got a Dallas team that's not finished. That division is impossible to figure out. Who better to tell you about the start of the UFC's nine days of fury than the most talked about man in the UFC, Conor McGregor. Friday, it's the ultimate fire finale. Wow. Then Saturday, I plan to obliterate Jose Aldo on the biggest night in UFC history. So don't miss the prelims. Live and free, only on FS1. That's on FS1. This is on FS. And it's time for Carolina to get it going. Again, dropped Delvin Bro. Give a four and seven team a little life here at home, and the Saints are coming at them. Well, that's a great job by Delvin Bro already with an interception here in this game. He works through a blocker and able to make a nice tackle there. Great work by him. Second week for the new signal caller for this defense, Dennis Allen. He was encouraged after week one, a loss at Houston. They're trying to simplify. Second and ten. This one a rocket out to Ginn. It's dropped. Third and ten. And now with action after the whistle, a flag. This may be 15 free yards. After the play was over, unsportsmanlike conduct, taunting, number 32, defense, 15-yard penalty, automatic, first down. It's Kenny Vaccaro. Talented yeah. young safety. Yeah, they have Carolina on the ropes. Delvin Bro, they're going after him. He makes another nice play out there at corner and would have been a long down in distance. And it's a good call. Yeah, they get Kenny Vaccaro. The league is watching these things. The officials are. And just not a, not a very smart play. So instead of third and ten, it's a first down out at the 35. Newton's going to air it out. Again, downfield is overthrown. This is one of the best deep ball throwing teams in the NFL. The Carolina Panthers. Yeah, they run their play action. They do their things. They want to run the football, but you better be prepared for the deep shots down the field. They take their share of them, and they've been working over Delvin Bro over there. He's been able to make some plays. He's playing tight coverage. They put Ted Ginn over there. He had a, he had two steps on him with a chance. Newton pass caught by Stewart survives a Kikaha hit, and Kikaha comes back to make the stop. But a 15-yard catch and run, and that shows you the strength of Jonathan Stewart. Uh, Jonathan Stewart has really had himself an outstanding season. Not a guy who catches a lot of passes. He breaks the tackle, picks up the first down. But you, know, you look at him, Joe, he's carrying the load now with D'Angelo Williams being gone. And he has held up, but he's close to setting a personal record on number of carries in a season. This is Carolina's biggest deficit on the scoreboard this season. Newton protected downfield wide open Olsen out of bounds. Could not have been more wide open but the throw by Newton drove him out of bounds second and ten. You know you see this from time to time with Cam Newton. These are the throws that you really you just have to hit. He missed it earlier to Ted Ginn with an opportunity for a touchdown and Greg Olson may score here if he's able to catch that in stride. He's got to make one guy miss but it should at the very least be a completion and those are just some throws you just simply can't miss. Panthers haven't run it on this drive yet. Continues. Funches incomplete looking for a flag doesn't get it Browner with coverage. Here's Mike Hill with a game break. Broncos and Chargers Denver defense stepping up like it has all season. Danny Trevathan picking off Phillip Rivers for the pick six 25 yards on the score making it 14 nothing Denver Rivers has nine picks 
five have been returned for touchdowns this season. Joe Troy back in. Denver trying to get to 10 and 2. Well, they're banging on Greg Olson as he's trying to get out, and after that, he was checking his hand. He's at the top of the formation, third down and 10. Newton looking his way, pass caught, Olson. He was knocked down immediately after a gain of nine by Vaccaro. It's fourth and one at the 41, and we'll see if Riverboat Ron yeah. wants to go for it. Well, I'm guessing Riverboat Ron is going to go for it, and it sure looks that way. And that's a great tackle by Kenny Vaccaro because when Olsen caught that, it appeared that he would be able to get the extra yard to pick up that first. And we'll see what Carolina is able to do here on fourth and one. First things first, we're going to have a timeout. Ball is at the 41. They have to get it to the 40 for a first down with a minute 33, and Ron Rivera is hot. The official, the referee, pointed toward New Orleans. Timeout Saints. Before this fourth and one. And I think Sean Payton is upset about the number of players that were in the huddle. Well, prior to that play. Yeah, both head coaches are discussing it. There's the tackle by Vaccaro. Great work on his part to force this fourth down call. And Ron Rivera clearly upset himself on the sidelines. And then, of course, Sean Payton have a lengthy discussion with the official. Mike Number Tolbert ran out of the huddle late. And that's what Sean Payton was hot about. Extra offensive lineman Daryl Williams in there for Carolina, fourth and one. Cam is going to walk for the first down and keep on going. Able to hang on to the ball, and he has set up Carolina with a first down just outside the 10 at the 11. It's a great call by Mike Shula, anticipating that these guys are all going to collapse. Nobody then accounts for the quarterback keeper. He's able to get on the edge without any problem and pick up a huge gain on this play. 30 yards his season long. And what's nice at the end of this, I mean, this is Cam Newton. He's not looking to run out of bounds and preserve himself. He keeps it in bounds and gets even more yards and contact. Here's Stewart. Good play made by Brian Dixon, a young corner. Second year out of Northwest Missouri State, and we're under 40 to play in the opening quarter. Well, Dennis Allen, when he took over as defensive coordinator, what he said they needed to start doing a better job of was communicating and then getting more bodies to the ball. They had to rally and gain tackle, and these guys are flying around, and that happens when you start creating takeaways. But that last run by Stewart it was great pursuit by this Saints defense. Allen, a former head coach in this league with the Raiders, 10th play of this drive. Newton keeps it. Pass caught by Conchery, and there to make the stop is Kyle Wilson. And that's how the first quarter will come to a close. A loss of three. Third down when we come back. 14-0 Saints back after this from your local Fox station. Big third down here for Carolina on America's Game of the Week. Third and 11. Blitz. Tolbert out of the backfield. He is in for the touchdown. And he does the Carlton. Alfonso Ribeiro. The man who made that dance famous. And Mike Tolbert has just put Carolina on the board. He is a weapon. You can forget about him, but he is always there for Cam Newton. Well, they bring the linebacker. He's got to be in man coverage. They're man across the board. Somebody's got to account for Tolbert when, when they bring the linebacker who was in coverage, it frees him up, and that's why he was as open as what he was, and nobody there then to make the play. 
How about Carolina on that drive. Typically they're a running play action type team. They threw it nine times and ran it only twice. But a big run was Cam Newton on fourth and one. A 30 yard scamper. And the lead is cut in half. Somebody gets a souvenir and those in blue are smiling down seven. Today's game is sponsored by Amazon Fire TV. So long, show home. By MetLife. Contact a MetLife Premier Client Group representative today. And by Burger King. Now get 10 chicken nuggets for $1.49. Only at BK. There's a brand new exhibit at the World War II Museum here in New Orleans. Members of our crew got a sneak peek at the road to Tokyo, which opens next Saturday. They said it is fantastic. There's the drive, eight plays, 80 yards. You saw the two head coaches, Ron Rivera, Sean Payton. And C.J. Spiller will take a knee, and for the difference between these two coaches and more on the both of them, here's Aaron. Roman Harper this week writing a great article for Sports Illustrated talking about the differences between these two coaches and, of course, Sean Payton who basically was made for this city, as you could see by his quote there. And as you guys mentioned earlier, Ron Rivera, Riverboat Ron, just smooth and steady. And I talked to Roman Harper about these two coaches, and he said just two completely different guys. But the one thing he loves about both of them is that they let him be the guy who he was. Here in New Orleans, when he played, he was more of an individual, kind of fiery, crazy. And he said here for Carolina, he's just more of a leader. What a play up front, Aaron. Thanks, made by Kyle Love. Woo. He shoots through and takes down Mark Ingram, a loss of three. Well, Kyle Love, he just shoots the gap, and he's able to just meet Ingram right in the backfield. Great work on his part, and you know, to follow up on Aaron's report, I know that Carolina sure happy to have Roman Harper back there. And in visiting with Sean Payton on Friday, he spoke glowingly of Roman Harper and what he meant to the Saints' success while he was playing for them. And a very smart player who does a lot of good things. Pass is caught. That's Cooks. And Roman Harper spent eight years as a New Orleans Saint. That article, by the way, is such a good read. It's part of Peter King's Monday morning quarterback section. It's so well written and points out the differences between playing for these two organizations. When they won it all back in 2009, it was a 13-0 start that year for the Saints. It's been an 11-0 start this year for the Panthers, 13. Here's Colston, what a catch! Shows the great hands and the big body, 6'4", 225. Calls it in for 14 on third and eight. Well, they put Marcus Colston in the slot. They got Brandon Cooks on the outside, and they run a little bit of a release there where they cross the two of them, and it allows Colston then one-on-one, -on -one, and Drew Brees lays that up nicely. Cor Cortland Finnegan in coverage, who was just signed in practice for the first time since last December this week. So they're using him right out of the gate. This one floated and out of the reach of Brandon Coleman who already has a big reception in this game. So far, Breeze has hit six different receivers. Second and ten. And it'll be interesting to see just how much they get out of Cortland Finnegan in this ball game. And you know, They lost Charles Tillman a couple of weeks ago to a knee injury, and Ben, a ben, ben Wickery had to then become the outside corner and had to shuffle some things around, and Ron Rivera just felt like they really needed a veteran corner to help you know, in that nickel position, and that's why they went out and got Finnegan. Gray <laughs> steps through some trouble over the middle. He's got Watson for a first down. A 16-yard completion, but a flag is down inside the 35. It's coming back. Holy offense number 65. 10-yard penalty, second down. Senio Calamente, who is in there now up front, and he is now playing right guard after the Saints started this game with Tim Lolito 
at right guard and now Calamante is in there. Calamante, the guy who he was grabbing was Charles Johnson who returned last week after missing eight weeks himself. Timeout taken by New Orleans, their second. So instead of a first and ten at the Carolina 48, because of the hold, second and 20 at their own 26 for the Saints, who lead by seven. Big hold called against Kelamete and the Saints to bring up second down and 20. With the ball at their own 26. Breeze protected. Ingram, who has added this part to his game, just spinning his way for a couple of extra yards. Went around Thomas Davis and Kurt Coleman got seven. Never really known as much of a threat out of the backfield catching it. New story in 2015. Well, you don't see this very often. You see Kurt Coleman, Thomas Davis had a shot at him, but at one time there was about nine Carolina Panthers around Mark Ingram. And he made a couple miss, but he wasn't going to get very far. This defense has been fun to watch all season. The third long ball game. Pass is juggled, caught, and that didn't work. T.J. Graham on third and 13 gets one. Mike Hill standing by with a game break. Hey, no Gronk, no Edelman, no problem. Danny Amendola's back for Tom Brady, 11-yard touchdown catch. Brady passes Dan Marino for third on the all-time list with 422 passing yards and touchdowns. 14-0 New England. Uh, he's a great one, and that is undeniable, Joe Buck. <laughs> so Amendola's back. Thank you, Mike. And that great coaching continues with the Patriots. That is not a good one by Morstead. He has one good one. This one is short. And Carolina, after just a 27-yard punt, takes over down seven. Today's game is sponsored by Nissan. Innovation that excites. It was a year ago tomorrow, December 7th. 2014 that the Panthers came here to this stadium. They had been 0-6-1 over their last seven. They won that game, won their next three, won the division at 7-8-1. They haven't lost in the regular season since. Good work by Newton. Escapes pressure, finds Dixon, the tight end down the sideline. Ripped out of bounds with a face mask potentially by Browner. And this is going to be a big play, and it all goes back to number one. Yeah, I mean, these are the things that, you know, really don't show Personal up foul. unless you've been Rest watching the, the game. Cam Defense. Newton, they're trying to take a shot down penalty. the field Automatic. once again, and First he down. makes someone miss, and then he buys a little time and finds his receiver out there, and and it's another, like, you know, that looked like the shoulder well there at the end, Noah's yeah. face mask, and, you know, another big penalty on that previous drive when Carolina was able to come away with a touchdown. They got the 15 yards on Vaccaro for unsportsmanlike conduct and now a 15 yard face mask penalty those are costly penalties for a defense that has struggled to stop people all year one by Vaccaro and now one by Brandon Browner on first down pass is caught Greg Olson he's got a first down inside the 20. They see Greg Olson, they use him in a lot of different ways. They'll split him out wide, they put him there in the slot, and he runs the crossing route. Cam Newton finds him a big target over the middle. Heavy pass. Well, that's not like them either, but they have definitely leaned more on the passing game here in this first half. No team runs it more than the Panthers this year in the NFL, over 50%. Newton is going to be sacked back near the 30. Brought down by Cameron Jordan, and hopefully Newton's okay as he went down awkwardly. Sack number eight for Jordan. Really a great job by Cam Jordan because Cam Newton had a lot of places to run. He was the only one who really was able to get back there, and normally you'll see Newton be able to elude that guy and spin out of it, but Cam Jordan zeroes in on him and makes the play. You see every Panthers fan worried about how Cam Newton is feeling right now. First sack for the Saints. 
was potentially a season changing sack. A little gimpy is Newton who steps into it, fires a strike, ball is dropped. That's a catch and fumble. Vaccaro as Olsen couldn't hang on. Dixon knocked it out and Vaccaro was there for the recovery. And this as of right now is a second fumble of the game third turnover for Carolina. It looked like Dixon when he was coming in to make the tackle he was able to get his right hand on the ball and knock it out. No it looked Greg Olson looked like maybe it just came out of his hand. I don't know if Dixon actually got his hand on there or not to force the fumble. But now Carolina turned the ball over three times now here in this first half. Cam is still feeling the effects. He was hobbling around before that snap was was made in the shotgun. He was bouncing around on one leg like he was uncomfortable really putting much pressure on his foot. Third turnover over the last 18 plays for the Panthers. Here's Ingram. And he lost the ball. Panthers say they have it. Jared Allen's under there and they do not. It's recovered by a big offensive lineman. That's Andrus Pete, the rookie. Here's the fumble by Ingram. Now Thomas Davis comes in. He gets his shoulder pad on the ball. It's just Ingram just loose with the football. They're fortunate that Andrus Pete was there to make the recovery. 14 yard run. No longer looking at the lower body of Cam Newton looked like it might have been an ankle the way he got twisted. And now he's watching his defense go to work. Saints up seven. High tower. Two yards. Let's go back to that sack by Cameron Jordan. And Cam Newton. Well, here's the play that whatever happened to him is when it occurred. And uh, Cam Jordan, he lands on the back of his legs. And, and then here's the snap before when he's bouncing around that left foot. And like he didn't want to put a much weight on his right foot. And then he's getting checked out now to see what all's going on. I, I kind of think it's the left. I don't know if he's hopping on it to try and stretch it out. Either way, they're looking at him on second down and eight. Breeze downfield too far for Cooks. Third down and eight. Well, right now the 14-7 game, Joe. The New Orleans is, you know, they've had some, they've had some opportunities. You know, they, they missed the field goal, and you know, with the way that they've been able to take the ball away, Carolina's had to rely heavily on this defense to make some plays. Greg Olson talking about the fumble. The backup quarterback Derek Anderson, third and eight. Wentz <laughs> Keekley did not get there in time, but forced a quick throw. And it's incomplete fourth down. That's a great job. They bring the pressure. They bring two, and so they force the Saints to pick up one. Freeze up Keekley with a straight shot on Breeze, and he knows he just got to get rid of it. So Ginn waits for the punt from Morstead. Morstead got an earful after his last effort from head coach Sean Payton. One good one, one bad one. And now a high hanger, and Ginn will haul in the fair catch outside the 25. 35-yard punt, nothing on the return. Panthers have it down seven. It's been a crazy week 13 in the NFL. Early game headline, Seattle soars their role and they win their third straight. We'll show you the numbers for Russell Wilson. A blown late lead by the Giants and the Jets win that battle for New York. And the Bengals, they just rolled up the Cleveland Browns. Andy Dalton and A.J. Green went off. Probably should have known after Thursday's game and that win by Green Bay in Detroit on the Hail Mary to Richard Rodgers. We were in for a wild week, and it's been that. Saints leading by seven. Here's Stewart gets one. Let's go down to the field and check in with Aaron. What's up with Cam Newton? Not much attention.
attention to Cam Newton when he was sitting on the bench. The athletic trainers came over and talked to him for a bit, but they did make him jump up, kind of shuffle around and throw the ball, and they were saying, how does it feel? How does it feel? He did grimace. And I got to tell you, all these trainers and doctors are like hawks right now watching him out on this field. A big 6'4", 245-pound quarterback. The shotgun on second and nine, a toss to Stewart, running right, gets a block. And he'll be forced out just short. Mike Remmers was out there with a good block. It'll be third down and one. Well, overall, this this New Orleans defense has, has done a pretty good job against Jonathan Stewart in the running game of the Panthers. Of course, the big fourth down run by Cam Newton, but a defense that has really struggled, especially here the last three weeks, of slowing anybody down in the run game, knowing that they were facing a team that likes to run it as much as they have, although Carolina, as we said, has relied more on throwing the football with some of these heavy boxes by the Saints. Tolbert back there with Cam. And Cam will just take it for the first down. Cam Newton now is seven for eight on third and one rushes. And with that big body, just any push at all, they're going to get it. Well, like Aaron Andrews said, <laughs> that the doctors are watching him like Hawks, but it doesn't change what they're going to do offensively. You know, still, they're in short yarded situation. They feel very comfortable letting him run with the ball. Winners of their last 15 regular season games. On first down. Newton as Tolbert tried to make a move and slipped. Still picked up six. Anderson taps him down. James Anderson got the start at weak side linebacker as the Saints again are without Donnell Ellerby. Made the trade with Miami, gave up Kenny Stills, who was their number two receiver to get him, but Ellerby's only played in four games now out with a hip. Yeah, I know coming into this year they they had some higher expectations for this defense a team that a group anyway that struggled a year ago and really in almost every defensive category they're worse this year than they were last season. On second and four Dixon first down. Dinkin and Duncan their way down the field and here's Mike Kill with another game break. Struggling Eagles trying to keep it close against the Patriots Sam Bradford to Zach Ertz look at that catch. Laying out for it, five yards, gets him six, his first of the season. Cutting that lead in half, 14-7 Patriots in the second. Joe Troy back to you. Well, they're right there. The Eagles are four and seven coming in. The Giants in front of them are five and seven. The Redskins five and six in first place. Here's Stewart. He's averaging 3.4 yards per carry before that as he gets seven, brought down by the rookie Anthony. Yeah, now they start relying on him a little bit more and He'll get going, and as I said earlier, I, I really like Jonathan Stewart, his style, he's a tough runner, he's got good vision, he's explosive, he's powerful. The big key, and Ron Rivera knows it, is just keeping him healthy. And I think if you look at whatever happens over the next few weeks, and if Carolina's able to lock something up with a couple games to go, I would expect him to start being rested a little bit more. They clinch the division here today. Handoff is to Tolbert. And Tolbert has got enough for another first down. That's three straight division titles for Ron Rivera and the Panthers. Yeah, and prior to the Panthers doing it last year, no team in the South, when they formed that division, was able to win back-to-back -back titles within the division. So that would be quite an accomplishment for Ron Rivera in the, the year that they've had this season. Here we go, here we go. With Atlanta's loss earlier, Panthers have the division in their pocket. Trying to go to 12 and 0 here today. Stewart driving. He's denied the 35-yard line. Picks up a couple. Anthony on the tackle. Stephon Anthony is the middle linebacker in the pick that the Saints got in the Jimmy Graham trade from the Seattle Seahawks. They got their starting center, Max Unger, a first round pick, and turned that pick into Steph Anthony, who's had a good year, but is still learning. Second and eight. Yeah. 
sideline pass bobbled but caught out of bounds and with the bobble no completion again third and eight. Well Brian Dixon matched up one on one they've got a shot and that's just one that Ted Ginn he he has to be able to catch he I don't know it's close it's closest to whether or not he had possession we'll see whether or not I challenge Ron Rivera wants to challenge this call and he is he just threw it. That's a catch to me Rivera is four for eight in challenges so he's not scared to throw that flag. No that's a that's an area for Ted Ginn where he's had some problems he's got seven drops on the season second most in the league and what should have been Carolina. a routine play it's challenging the ruling on the field of incomplete pass it's close it's a matter of whether or not he had possession and if his left toe drag I think that's a catch I do too we'll get the call when we come back let's get the call after reviewing the play the ruling on the field has been changed the receiver did complete the catch with both feet in bounds. Therefore, it is a catch. We have placed the ball at the 27-yard line, first and 10 at the 27 on the hash mark closest to the Saints bench. Carolina is not charged a timeout. The game clock will start. There were no shortage of sideline referees along the Saints sideline to help with the call, but that's a good overturn. Rivera is now five for nine. Coming into this week 13, the only head coach that had challenged more this season was Bruce Arians. So the top two records in the NFC, their head coach is not afraid to give it another look. And with the clock winding at 2.35, first down at the 27. Hand off to Stewart. What a good move. And Jonathan Stewart sets up first and goal. And if the Panthers want, they can let it wind down to the two-minute warning. Well, Ryan Khalil, their center, he pulls out. You can see the job that he does. And then, of course, you've got Jonathan Stewart, who it's one-on-one -on -one open field. He makes a miss and just a good job of executing a running play by this Carolina offensive front. Running game is kicking it into gear for the Panthers. First and goal, two minutes left. Get apps, videos, and more at iTunes.com slash NFL. 14-7 Saints, first and goal from just outside the five for Carolina. Cam keeps it, flips it. For the touchdown to Jonathan Stewart. Stewart is in and with the extra point to come, a chance to tie it for Carolina as they have climbed out of a 14 to nothing hole. Nice little play there by the Panthers. Yeah, it's blocked up well. They use Greg Olson. He blocks the edge right here. And then as Cam Newton comes down, it's just one on one. This is option football. and. Jonathan Stewart able to get the pitch and put it in. Not that easy to flip it or pitch it left-handed like that. Newton did. Tested Stewart, who had to kind of spin around to catch the pitch. And then rumble into the end zone. But the extra point is blocked. This is Anthony. He's all alone. This is worth points. Two of them for the Saints as they add to their lead. Is the first one ever as the rule has been changed blocked by Kevin Williams and Anthony took it the other way for two points and that's the first time we've seen it in the NFL how about that Kevin Williams he gets up is able to get a push get his hand on the ball and then just a perfect bounce right into the hands of Anthony Nobody was going to catch him. That's a big momentum swing right there. Carolina thinks they're about to tie it up 14-14, and instead, New Orleans comes away with two more points and a three-point lead. And what was just a foregone conclusion last year, 
with extra points has become anything but routine in 2015 as they moved it back. It's the first block extra point returned for two points in NFL history. It's blocked by Williams. It's returned by Anthony, and it's a three-point game. Yeah, the league's kind of gotten what they were wanting. You know, out of the extra point, they got kind of tired that they were pretty much automatic over the years, and they wanted to bring in a little bit more skill, maybe not make them so certain, and that's been the case. Of course, that one being the first one returned, but a lot of misses this season. Graham Gano now has missed three of them. That one blocked. With a minute 55 left, the Saints will get the ball, leading by three with one timeout. And now, Kurt Menefee, what's coming up at halftime? Coming up on the Visa Halftime Show, we are live from Pearl Harbor. And as you can see, it's been an amazing day in this historic location, surrounded by the brave men and women who protect our country. And of course, there's been plenty of exciting football to discuss, so make sure you come back and join us live from Pearl Harbor on the Visa Halftime. Kurt, thanks. First down from the 20 as the Carolina touchdown nets just four points. Pass is caught by Coleman. He spun around with a gain of six. Well, what a turn of events right there. And now with a three-point lead and plenty of time on the clock, we'll see what Drew Brees is able to do here before the end of this first half. Pass is caught. Depends on the forward progress. That's Ingram. Brought down by Keekley. First down. Delayed handoff to Ingram. Trying to get out of bounds. Cannot get around Ben Wickery. Good play and a good tackle by number 25. Sure was. I think he's had himself a nice season. You know, Josh Norman, Luke Keekley, those guys, they get all the attention but Ben Wickery has quietly gone about having an outstanding year himself. Second and 11. Breeze. Pass caught. That's Watson. Third down coming up. Third down and three after the completion to Benjamin Watson who has a touchdown in this game. the right hand of Colston and he was covered well Finnegan was back there Keekley was in the neighborhood it's fourth down with 29 seconds left and with three timeouts maybe a chance depending on how they start field position wise to get some points yeah I think it will be interesting to see what Ron Rivera decides to do knowing that Carolina is going to get the ball to start the second half I think a lot of it depends on what happens here on this return Morstead hits a good one. Fair catch inside the 20. Let's take another look. This is why the crowd was reacting. Williams with not just one but two shots on T.J. Graham. But no flag. The Walter Payton NFL Man of the Year Award presented by Nationwide has a long history of honoring players who have significantly impacted both the game and their communities. Each NFL team nominates one for the award and three finalists will be announced in January of 2016 for Carolina, Greg Olson, for the Saints, Benjamin Watson. Two tight ends. And that's going to be it for the half. Well, I'll tell you, Joe, on that award, it's a, it's a great honor for whoever ultimately receives it, but... It highlights the guy from each team that is doing a lot of good in their community. Two good citizens. Greg Olson, Benjamin Watson. Good game. The undefeated Carolina Panthers down by three. We've seen history in this game. Saints lead by three at the half. Back after this. Today's excitement brought to you by Nissan. to 
today's excitement brought to you by Nissan. We also saw some history with an extra point block return for a two point conversion. We welcome you inside our broadcast booth. I'm Joe Buck along with Troy Aikman and here's Carolina undefeated. They've turned it over three times at an extra point blocked for two points. They're down only three. They're in a good spot here. Yeah, uh, you know, as much as you said that went against them there in that first half, I, I've got to believe they feel good, relatively speaking, you know, only being down three points and then to get the ball to start this second half. So, you know, things couldn't have gone worse for them, and we'll see if they're able to battle. They've been in tight situations before. As I said, they've won a lot of different ways. This isn't new territory for them. Look, these guys are paid to play this game, but I've been impressed with the fight by the New Orleans Saints. The defense has really come to play. And for the now coordinator, Dennis Allen, second week calling the plays, he's got to be thrilled. This is as good as his defense has looked in a while. Here's Fozzie Whitaker on the return for Carolina. Ran into his own man and is able to take it out to the 21. After he banged into David Mayo. Let's go down to Aaron Andrews. Well, Sean Payton very happy with this defense as well, Joe. But let's talk about Carolina because when I was talking to Ron Rivera going into the half, I asked him about the turnovers and he said, our team didn't come into this game with the right attitude. We expected this team to just roll over the second we walked out there. I then tried to talk to him about why the running game got it going towards the end of the half and he started saying blocking may have helped and then he said, no, that's not even it. We just weren't even ready to play. I said, will you address it? And he said, you better believe it. Well, let's see how they come out of the gate here in the second half, Aaron. First down at the 21. Here is Stewart with Newton riding his hip. A gain of three. And now a flag is thrown in the secondary around the 30. Yeah, that came in awfully late, too. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 39, defense, 15-yard penalty, automatic, first down. Troy, the numbers for Brandon Browner, and that's why, and that's a good call. Brandon Browner's been called for defensive holding nine times. Three pass interference calls, five personal fouls, two in this game, and one illegal contact call against number 39. That's incredible. Well, that was another... Penalty that wasn't very smart. He's the most penalized player on this Saints team. 18 penalties coming into this game. Wow. Here's Olsen. What a throw was his left foot in bounds. It was to the 41. And in a blink, the Panthers are inside Saints territory. Good for 20. Now you kind of wonder sometimes how Greg Olsen is able to find some of these holes knowing that he's the mm. most targeted guy. They get the snap off before they get a chance to look at it. Yeah, I, I mean, even from here, it looked like that left foot. Let's see, he's got the ball. Right foot, left foot. He was out of bounds. They missed it. And because the Panthers hustled to the line, the Saints didn't have any time to look at the replay. Yeah, that, no. should have been, that should have been a red flag. Well, it definitely would have been had Sean Payton had been able to have somebody upstairs that could have alerted him. Cam Newton does an excellent job getting to the line. You don't see officials miss him quite that obviously. And that stuff for the officials continues week after week. Second and eight. Here's Tolbert. Ducks in behind his blocking. Takes it inside the 15. And out of bounds near the 10. They list him as a fullback, but he's a threat with a ball in his hands. Yeah, and when he's the back who's getting the ball, then who's going to lead block for him? And it's tied in Ed Dixon, and Colbert's able to get in behind him. He's a, he's a big physical guy, and they're really fortunate to have him. He can do a lot of different things as we go back and we take a look. Left toe, right foot. I think that might have been a good call, and you and I are wrong. Awfully close, yeah, no question that... John Payton likely would have challenged that. I don't know that anybody had a chance to really get a look at it, but could have been the right call. Here is Stewart bouncing it out left side. And he is down inside the 10. A 29-yard carry, by the way, for Tolbert was a season long to get him into a position 
For now a second and goal as he's huffing and puffing on the sideline. Well, like I said, he, he, the guys like him are invaluable. He's a lead blocker. They can throw him the football. He's a one back guy. He can block. He's a pa good pass protector. He pretty much does it all. Eighth year out of Coastal Carolina is Tolbert. Here is Stewart. He is bottled up, has to force his way back to the line of scrimmage. But the running game has been progressively getting better for the Carolina Panthers, and that's how they win football games. Yeah, they came out, they opened this game up, throwing the football, and, and then that second quarter, they started getting back to really what they're about, running the football, and Jonathan Stewart started to see some holes. We'll see now what the Saints are able to do on third down, as we talked about. Making stops here, not giving up touchdowns, become big. Saints playing without Delvin Bro. Injured in the first half. Pass is incomplete, but a flag. As Ted Ginn was hollering after the play. Jarris Bird is on him, a hold, and that'll be an automatic first down. Well, it's Brandon Browner, <laughs> who's got the contact and holding. Defense number 39. You see as Ginn's trying to come out of the route. Automatic. First down. Browner has his right hand up there on his chest, and the officials make the right call. That is the 10th defensive hold called against Brandon Browner this season. There's Ricky Prohl. What a fantastic receiver he was in. His time in the league, receivers coach talking to Ted Ginn. Uh, he's he was, he he's was, done a job with these guys. Uh, he was a technician when he played. Here's Newton keeping it, faking it, running it to the end zone, gets a hit, and does not get in. And he got thumped. Maudie, the linebacker, is there. And let's take a look at this hit as he was coasting. It was helmet to helmet, Newton the runner. Yeah, I, I don't know that Cam Newton was expecting contact, to be honest with you, Joe. He came out, he kind of slow plays it here towards the end. It looked like he thought he was just going to go in without any problem. And here comes Motti, and he lays one on him. I mean, that was a big-time collision, not one that the Carolina coaches want to see. Sean Payton's looking for a flag. I'm with you. It looked like Cam Newton was coasting here is Stewart but timeout called prior to the play by Carter Carolina Charles timeout Carolina they're first Sean Payton is still livid and I don't know what it is that he's arguing about but whatever it was our referee Brad Allen wasn't buying it now he's going to challenge. New Orleans is challenging. There were 12 players in the formation. Part for the snap. And now a challenge. We'll get the call. Newton's thinking he might have had the touchdown. Coasted, got popped. And we'll check the call and get it when we come back. Today's game is sponsored by Southwest. Transparency. Low fares, nothing to hide. By the Ford F-150. Every other truck is history. And by State Farm. It pays to double check. Talk to your agent today. Let's take a look. 12 men not in the huddle only, but at the line of scrimmage. And interestingly enough, a timeout was taken by Carolina, which allowed the challenge. You can't challenge, as we checked in with Mike Pereira, how many men were in the huddle, but it didn't matter. There were 12 men out on the field lined up. Well, Sean was upset because they didn't make the call on 12 men in the huddle. He was trying to get their attention the entire time. After reviewing the play, on the previous play, there were not 12 players. Therefore, there is no challenge. There is no timeout. First down. I don't understand that call. Here's Mike. Here's the huddle, and that's what we think, Mike, he was complaining about. But then 12 men lined up, and the timeout occurred. What did you see back in L.A.? Well, really what happens is if you widen this out, timeout was called before this snap, period. 
So you didn't have a penalty, and he did want to challenge 12 in the huddle, but 12 men in the huddle is not reviewable. In their formation, yes it is, but really it's a nothing play because the side judge at the top of the screen was shutting down the play before the snap anyways. So the timeout by Carolina, no play, no penalty, and now Stewart is hit behind the line of scrimmage as these Saints keep playing. It'll bring up third down and goal. A loss of two. Well, Mike Tolbert's going to be the lead blocker, but you're going to see Vaccaro, who he comes up, and he just takes him right on, and he gives Stewart just nowhere to go with the football. That's great work by the Saints defense, and Vaccaro coming up and laying the wood. We'll see if the Saints can make Cam Newton pay for that effort heading toward the end zone a couple of plays ago. Third down and goal. Good protection. Flag is thrown. Two of them are down. Pass is caught in the end zone by Jonathan Stewart, but there are flags all over the field. There's a hat down. Holy. Offense, number 74. Turn your on down. See the hat in the back of the end zone and two flags are thrown for a hold on Mike Remmers. But I'll take you back to what you pointed out. I saw the same thing. Cam Newton three plays ago was running for the end zone, was going to coast in and just sneak in the front door. And he got popped right here by Monty. Newton never saw him. Yeah, if he goes low, you know, I, I, I don't know if he didn't see him or he just didn't expect it, thought that he, I don't know. But if he goes low, if Cam Newton does, he scores pretty easily on that play. Now it's third and goal from the 13. End zone, wide open, touchdown again. And the potential touchdown run doesn't matter. It turns into a touchdown pass on a laser from Cam Newton. They just completely lose him into the end zone. You see Cam Newton, he wants that ball. He's going to go give it to one young kid here in the stands. That's his Sunday giveaway. Watch this route here and the job that he does. They turn him loose back here. He just runs right by him and gets into the back of the end zone and hard to believe. Again, touchdown number five. And it's a 20 to 16 lead for Carolina as Cam Newton now with two third down touchdown passes. On America's Game of the Week, the only undefeated team left in the NFL here in week 13 leads by four. Cam Newton moments ago just jogged off the field into the locker room. Derek Anderson is getting loose. We're wondering, we'll try to get confirmation. Aaron's down there, obviously. If it's for that helmet to helmet hit, going through maybe a concussion protocol after that hit by Michael Maudie. What followed was a touchdown throw to Ted Ginn for the lead. And the first lead of the day is enjoyed by Carolina. It's four points. Meanwhile, we've talked about all the penalties against Brandon Browner. Here was one for a personal foul after the whistle, after the play. Here's a defensive hold, which was called his 10th of the season. And then Brandon Browner and Dennis Allen, Dennis Allen, the new coordinator, just stood chest to chest with him. And that came after the touchdown pass because it was Brandon Browner who was standing there that let Ted Ginn go right by him on third and goal for the touchdown. Here's a near interception by Ben Wickery as he stepped in front of Brandon Coleman. Boy, they don't miss on many opportunities like that either. 18 interceptions coming into this game, leading the NFL. They've been a takeaway machine this season, especially here in the last month. And Ben Wickery, he has a great opportunity. They don't come much easier than that. This Carolina team today is minus three in the turnover battle, but leading by four. The Panthers have erased a 14 to nothing Saints lead. 
On second and ten. Breeze had a hit, and that was the right hand of Charles Johnson. Good play. How about this play? Here's Mike Kill with a game break. Hey, guys, just like the Panthers, the Eagles have overcome a 14-0 deficit to take the lead. Malcolm Jenkins picking off Tom Brady on the goal line, and the former Saints about to take it back to the house. 100 yards on the return. Eagles desperately need a win. They're on top, 21-14 in the third. Joe, Troy, back to you. In the wide open NFC East, where even the Dallas Cowboys are alive. Another third and long for Drew Brees, third and ten. And he goes down. Sacked on the play by Short. And this guy is playing great football. K1 Short, sack number seven on the year. Yeah, he's been unbelievable all season long. You're going to see the rush here, and here comes Short. He splits the double team. He's able to get the sack. Then on Drew Brees, and they've had a lot of sacks from a lot of guys, and, and one of the real keys has been the inside push, and Kwan Short has been nothing short of amazing all season. Beautiful punt by Morstead. Kwan Short now with seven sacks on the year. That ties the Carolina record. Chris Jenkins, his seven sacks by a defensive tackle. Back to work on offense up four. Today's game is sponsored by Verizon. Better matters. Panthers have their first lead of the day. Cam Newton is back out there. So everything checked out in the dressing room, whatever it was that they were looking at. And here's Stewart right side, well played by the Saints defense. And Stephon Anthony was in there to help make the stop a gain of one. You think about it, Joe. Cam Newton, he goes in the locker room, he gets checked. He apparently is fine. He's back on the field and he's playing. But this has been a physical game for him. He had the ankle earlier in the game. And then, of course, the big collision, you know, there at the goal line. And that is one of the real concerns of this coaching staff, that his style, and they don't back away from it. I mean, they have him run the ball, obviously. But he takes a lot of punishment. He certainly can deliver it, too. But... Can't afford to lose him. Second and nine. This pass is low and caught by Olsen. And again, Greg Olsen finds a void in this secondary for the Saints. They have turned him wide open. Yeah. Totally loose. Well, they're, they're giving him free releases off the line of scrimmage, they, or they did there. And when they're in zone coverage, then he's just able to get in behind those linebackers and Give Cam Newton just a free shot. Olsen had eight catches, 134 yards, and two touchdowns in the first meeting in week three. Here's Stewart. Spinning does not go out of bounds. How about that effort for a first down? He's like a bowling ball. Nobody can bring him down, and he just went right around Vaccaro and picked up 11. Survived this tackling effort by the Saint safety. Yeah, but Carl, he's had a few penalties, but he's also made some nice plays and comes in, tries to put the big hit on Stewart, unable to get him to the ground. Bacaro, who came off a frustrating year last year, has, you know, again, for a defense that has had their problems, he's been, he's been pretty decent this season. Here's Stewart. He just won't go down. Down near the 30, brought down by Anderson. This season stream live local Sunday afternoon games right on your smartphone with NFL Mobile. I like what longtime owner of the Carolina Panthers, Jerry Richardson, told us before the game. Former Baltimore Colt, native Carolinian. He talked about Cam Newton and said he's making the layup now. He's willing to take the underneath stuff, not always looking for the big home run. And he's such a threat with everything he does. He keeps it here. And he will run for an easy first down and hop out of bounds inside the 20. And before the game, Jerry Richardson was talking with Jake DeLome, who's one of the nicest guys we've covered in our time together. Boy, sure is. His first start was for the Saints, and it was against me when I was playing with the Cowboys. But 
Jerry Richardson, you know, he you're right. He talked about Cam Newton being able to make the layup now and the plays, the, the plays that are given to him. But you could tell an owner that sure is proud of this team and and proud of a lot of the players on this team, some of the character they have. Here's Fonzie Whitaker right side with blocking in front of him. He's got a first down and sets up first and goal. Jerry Richardson is a flanker playing for the Colts. Got a big Johnny Unitas pass in that championship game in 1959 against the Giants and used that bonus money to invest in Hardy's and start to build up his net worth. And when he took over as the Panthers owner when they got the expansion franchise in October of 93, became the first ex player to own a team in the NFL since George Hallis. As Newton on first and goal is brought down behind the line of scrimmage by Bobby Richardson, a loss of five. Well, Second down and goal. Yeah, it's quite a success story for for Jerry Richardson and you know what he's been able to accomplish in bringing the NFL to Carolina. And like I said, they win this ball game. They win their third straight NFC South division. Jerry Richardson, however, and the rest of this team, they got bigger aspirations than just winning their division. By virtue of the Falcons losing earlier today, they've already clinched the division. Now second down and goal with the ball back at the 13. Pass caught by Funches. Touchdown. And what a throw by Cam Newton. Just on a line into pretty good coverage. Touchdown, Carolina. Well, this is an absolute laser that he throws. Brandon Brown are in coverage. A great release off the line of scrimmage. And Funches, he came on about four weeks ago against the Green Bay Packers, and he's played awfully well. Does an excellent job capping that drive. He stepped in when Corey Brown missed a couple of games with a bad shoulder. Doesn't matter who you give Cam Newton on the outside these days. He finds him, he hits him. 27-16, Panthers. Under five to go, third quarter, and the Carolina Panthers are trying to make it 12-0. They trail to 1.14 to nothing. They have taken this game over since then. Up by 11. This is Spiller. Back down at the 23. This weekend as we pay tribute to the events at Pearl Harbor and honor those who selflessly serve our country, Fox Sports is proud to support Folds of Honor in its mission of providing educational scholarships to families of military members who have been killed or disabled while serving our nation. For more information, visit foxsportssupports.com. There is Tom Benson. Tom Benson, who was a Navy man Served in World War II on the USS South Dakota. Pass is caught as the Saints try to get it going again. This is Brandon Coleman. And Tom Benson, who has watched the Saints, as we said at the beginning, after handing this franchise over to Sean Payton, making the pickup of Drew Brees, Become a team to be reckoned with across the NFL. They won it all in 2009. But it's been kind of fits and starts here the last couple of years. After getting their record even at four and four, they've lost three straight coming in. Handoff is to Ingram left side, and he got hit hard by Kurt Coleman. Let's go to Mike Kill with a game break. Hey guys, Pats haven't lost two straight in over three years, but that streak in serious jeopardy today. Darren Sproles on the punt return from his own 17, taking it to the house 83 yards. Three of their four TDs today, non-offensive. 28 unanswered for Philly. They're up by 14 in the third. Mike, thanks. Movement, whistles, flags. See who gets it. Neutral zone infraction, number 94, defense. 
Five yard penalty. Second down. Steve Horn, our editorial consultant, reminds us that on December 7, 1941, that fateful day, the attack in Pearl Harbor it occurred at 12.55 Eastern Time in the afternoon. And there were games that were going on in the NFL at that time. Here's a second three, and they do it again. That's the easiest first down. If it's against Ely, yeah, they may have gotten Ely again. He comes into this game with sacks in each yeah. of the last five games. He's trying to get another. 93 defense. Five-yard penalty results in the first down. Well, they got the wrong guy, at least number-wise. They said 93. Ely is the one who gets Cam Newton trying to pump him up. It's a first down by penalty. Back to back offside. When those games were going on in the NFL on December 7th of 1941 after that attack just before 1 o'clock in the afternoon Eastern time, public address announcers at games told service personnel to report to their units at the Redskins game at Washington's Griffith Stadium. High-ranking government and military figures were paged. The attack, however, was not announced. There weren't even transistor radios that were in the stands by that point, so that was withheld. Imagine what that must have been like in those stadiums in 1941. Here is a fake toss. Breeze backs up. Down the middle. Got Cooks. Saints back in it. Touchdown, New Orleans. Four yards from Drew Brees. Well, Brandon Cooks has only had two catches in this game prior to that touchdown reception. Josh Norman has been on him most of the time. And so they line him up right here where Josh Norman's going to be. They motion him across. Drew Brees knows immediately that it's zone coverage. Nobody goes with him. And they turn him loose down the middle of the field. And just a bust in assignment on the back end by the Carolina Panthers. And now going for two are the Saints. They are 0 for 3 in this category this season. They have a two point conversion that came defensively on a block extra point. Doesn't count for this offense trying to cash in here and make it a three point game. This is now a three point game at 27 to 24. With under three to go in quarter number three. This is Brandon Cooks from 54 yards away. And then Ingram. The gap is closed to three. Cooks hits a home run for 54 yards. And after the two point conversion, it's a three point game. This is Webb that dives in front of Whitaker to make the catch and a knee. Let's go back to the touchdown. Well, it's well designed by Sean Payton. He puts Cooks right here, but that brings Norman this way. So what he does is he motion Cook here, thinking he's going to get one-on-one -on -one and get him to the post. He doesn't get the man-to-man -man coverage that he's anticipating. Instead, the Panthers go zone. And they should have had a good coverage against this with a two deep look. But it looked like Kurt Coleman initially, he trying to cover the crossing route on the deep guy and then no deep middle safety help. And it allows Cooks to go the distance for the touchdown. Kurt Coleman was a nice addition on a relatively cheap two year deal that Dave Gettleman put together for him. He's got five picks and the touchdown at Dallas on Thanksgiving. Cooks ran right by him. Here is Stewart on a screen that never really developed. James Anderson on the tackle, a gain of six. Well, you know, you look at the second half, and, and Carolina, you know, they started to get some things going, and they were building a lead, and 
you just wonder then how a team's going to respond, especially one that's four and seven. And take a look at Mike Shula. He knows now he's got to keep his foot on the pedal, you know, with just a three-point lead. But an excellent job by the Saints offense going down, coming away with a touchdown, and then converting on the two points. Hand off to Stewart, and he is ripped to the ground. Behind the line of scrimmage by Davison. Tyler Davison, he's getting his opportunity because John Jenkins is out with a concussion, and he makes a big play there to force a third down with an opportunity for this Saints defense to get off the field. Clock winding. There's a clock in the Fox box not operating. It's third down. Newton steps through and down he goes. A flag is thrown in the secondary. Cameron Jordan gets another for the moment. It is a hold against the Saints and that's a first down. And takes a sack away from Jordan. Holding defense number 32. Five yard penalty. Automatic. First down. Vaccaro and this has been a defense that's been racking up flags all game. Yeah they have and Dennis Allen he, he says we're going to play man coverage here on third down and Vaccaro he has to try to cover Greg Olson and as Greg Olson comes into him he grabs him and that's what the official sees it was a good call everywhere else pretty good coverage. That's a second on Vaccaro three on Browner first down by penalty. Now Cam Newton airs it out. He's got a juggle and a drop by Ginn. And Cam Newton couldn't have handed it to him any better. Well, that's what you call just walking it to him. You couldn't hand it off any better than this. I mean, this is a perfect throw. You got Brandon Browner trying to cover Ted Ginn. I mean, that take that all day and as I said earlier, this has been a problem for Ted Ginn is the drops. He's had them really all season long. He had a bobble earlier that he was able to haul in for the catch, but that was a touchdown going away. Newton had 15 straight completions before that drop. A Carolina record, second and 10. Pass is dropped again. This time it's Funches. This is a Carolina team that lost their top threat on the outside. Kelvin Benjamin, August 19th, a non-contact situation, a torn ACL. Their first round pick out of Florida State last year. Had over 1,000 yards as a rookie. He's missed the whole season. Well, that one that Ted Ginn dropped, that was, that was one of those layups that Gary Richardson talks about. Third down and 10. Blitz. Panthers pick it up and overthrown is Corey Brown. And he was wide open. This is an unbelievable route by Corey Brown. And Cam Newton can't believe he missed him. He completely turns around Brandon Browner. There is nobody there. That <laughs> two give me touchdowns <laughs> in three plays and unable to convert on either one. Now Nortman to punt. What that possession could have been for Carolina as their lead is three. Here is the rookie, Murphy, and a flag on the sideline. And now maybe Carolina gets one. Teddy Williams along the boundary. Just a 36-yard punt, three yards on the return. And a flag at the end of it. Who's it against? Carolina says it's against New Orleans. We'll see. During the return, illegal block in the back. Number 24, the return team. 10 yard penalty from the end of the run. First down. So we'll take another look. A block in the back, and instead of it being a penalty the other way, Sean Payton's team. 
don't know about that gets called for that. Yeah I don't agree with that call either they just see a guy go to the ground and they assumed he got blocked in the back but didn't see much there by Kyle Wilson. So that moves the ball for the Saints back inside the 30 to the 28. There have been nine New Orleans Saints penalties in this game. They're averaging nine and a half a game. That's above, above the league average. Carolina's under seven for the season per game. Breeze finds Hill. 30 seconds left in quarter number three. Hill good for four. Crazy game here in New Orleans. Wild game at Foxborough. With the Eagles trying to jump right back in it in the NFC East, and Drew Brees has had enough for the third quarter. Three point game. Carolina up 27 24. And with that, we will step aside. Fox NFL Sunday returns after this from your local Fox station. Provided by Nationwide. 15 minutes left. Will the Panthers walk out of this building 12 and 0? Will the Saints pull an upset as they trail by three? Second down as we start quarter number four. Head around. Well, they come right back with the same action that they scored the touchdown on earlier. They motion Cooks across Pass the formation. Defense number 25. Ball is placed at the spot of the foul. Automatic. First down. They motion him across and it puts him one on one with Ben Wickery on the outside and. Ben Wickery gets called for the pass interference, and rightfully so. There's contact. He doesn't turn to play the ball. But had Breeze have been able to get the ball out there, Cooks had a couple steps on Ben Wickery for a touchdown. 37-yard penalty. Ready. Ready. <laughs> now on first down, Breeze out to his right. Sideline, flag thrown, Watson with a catch. The catch is good, a flag is down. There is no foul for illegal contact. The quarterback immediately rolled outside the pocket. No illegal contact. So they pick the flag up. The catch is good. And it's a first down on the completion to the 20. Well, that close. That hill was close as to whether or not he got his foot in bounds or not. A challenge flag is thrown by Ron Rivera. Ron Rivera has one of the best arms in the NFL or that's got extra weight in it because this guy can <laughs> throw a flag. Sometimes you got to get those officials attention. Carolina, I mean he just really launches the field of a completed pass. We will review the play. Time out. That was called a catch. We'll get the call when we come back. Tight game in New Orleans. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Chevrolet. Find new roads. By Microsoft Surface, the official tablet of the NFL. And by Target. Expect more, pay less. Here's another look at that play along the sideline. We think Ron Rivera is going to win his second challenge of the game. You can make a case and maybe the left foot gets down, but it doesn't matter because after Here's reviewing the play, the receiver did not get two feet in bounds. Therefore, it is an incomplete pass. It will be second down and 10 on the New Orleans hash, 14-46, 31-yard line. So bonus challenge now in the pocket for Ron Rivera. 
And the right foot never got down in bounds. He tapped that left foot down twice. So it's second down and 10 with the ball outside the 30 at the 31. Well, you said coming in, he was second to Bruce Arians in challenges. He now has 10 on the year. <laughs> He's leading in that category. That's right. Unless Bruce went off in St. Louis, I don't know. Second and 10. is caught by Hill and Josh Hill who came in with 10 catches on the season good for seven Keekley on the stop yeah, well this has been an impressive drive like I said this is a defense that it's hard to move the football against and, and for a New Orleans team that you know obviously is down this season has not had the year that they had hoped to have coming into the year got down and everything was pointing in Carolina's favor and just keep playing and keep plugging away and right now regardless of what happens here they've got an opportunity to tie this ball game up. Timeout taken by Drew Brees. Each side now has used a timeout in this second half. Well, Drew Brees knows what it's like to be undefeated late in the season. He and the Saints were undefeated got to 13 and 0 back in 2009 when they won it all and now it's Cam Newton's turn and it's the Carolina Panthers turn and uh, it's been impressive to see them climb out of this 14 point hole. This is a game. Yeah, they just keep playing. I mean, there's been a lot of things in the first half. A lot of things were going in their favor. They were able to create the takeaways in the second half. Here they get behind and it looked like the game maybe was starting to get away from them. But, you know, they haven't quit. I think that's a good sign for this team. It's a good sign for this staff. And, you know, we knew coming into this game that this was going to be a challenging game. Two teams that know each other a lot and have been uh, at the top of the mountaintop. Certainly the Saints have been and the way that Carolina has been able to play this year. It was a good meeting the first time they met. Week three. That game ended basically on an interception by Norman in the end zone. And a five point Carolina win. Now third down and three. Saints back on top. Third touchdown pass for Drew Brees. When they run the motion there, they run the swing route, and as Drew Brees pumps it to the swing, it forces then Josh Norman to make a decision. He throttles thinking they may be throwing it there. It allows then Coleman to get in the hole within that zone and Breeze threads it beautifully. Coleman cooks and Watson with touchdown catches for the Saints who lead by four. Drew Breeze at home, deadly for the four and seven Saints trying to knock off the Panthers here today. Coleman good from 24 yards out and for the young receiver first year out of Rutgers. He's going to get more and more playing time down the stretch. Sean Payton loves him. Brandon Coleman has his second touchdown catch of the season. Whitaker takes a knee. Well they may be 11 and 0 but it has not always been easy. Some close calls this season overcame a 13 point deficit to beat Seattle on the road they defeated the Colts in overtime after blowing a 17 point lead that was a game where Ted Ginn dropped what could have been a game ending touchdown catch only to be bailed out by the right foot of Graham Gano who's the special teams player of the month for the month of November here's Cam Newton down by four and we'll see whether or not Dennis Allen is going to give help to Brandon Browner Big toss, handoff to Stewart, a lot of room to run. And Jonathan Stewart is going to pick up 11 and a first down. Well, that's an excellent job by Mike Shula, the offensive coordinator. They play the safety deep to give help to Brandon Browner. And because of that, they are not able to drop the safety down to help in run support. So they don't throw the ball at Browner. Instead, Mike Shula decides he's going to run it, anticipating they're going to give Browner help, and it pays off. Started slow, but Stewart's had a nice day, and he has been tough to bring down. 
Four yards a carry for Stewart and a touchdown. This is going to be a hold as Newton throws it away. This will be a hold against the offensive line of the Carolina Panthers. They want to get the number right. Holding offense number 74. 10 yard penalty. First down. And it's Rammers to back him up 10. That's the right tackle number 74. And that's a hold. That's his third penalty of the day. His second hold. He also has one false start. And six false starts on the year. First and 20 now. Deep down the middle, pass caught by Olsen. He and Jarris Bird were right there, and Olsen got in position for a 32-yarder. Well, they call the perfect defense. They got Stephon Anthony, who's running with Olsen up the seam. It's an old Tampa Bay cover, too, is what they call it, but a perfect throw. Olsen's playing the ball. He's able to see the release, come back, make a play on it, and Anthony never able to get his head turned around. Just great execution. The hit by Bird came a step too late. Here's a pass caught somehow by Corey Brown, and he was dropped immediately by Kyle Wilson. Gain of two, and that was a painful two for a guy they call Philly Brown. Yeah, for a guy who's finally getting back onto the field this week after missing the last couple with a shoulder injury. By the way, Aaron Andrews confirmed that they were checking the head of Cam Newton when he jogged off the field after getting that hit by Maudy earlier in this half. The one on one down here. Newton's looking that way and now fires for Ginn downfield. Touchdown, Ted Ginn. And just like that, Carolina back on top. Newton's got four on the day. And just continues to prove he can beat you in a number of ways. Yeah, but he's going to run this, and what they're going to try to do is cover him then with Anthony down the middle, and that's not going to work. It's just a good play call by Mike Shula. They get a matchup problem. They don't play man coverage, what initially looked like it was going to be. They're expecting the middle linebacker rookie to try to cover again across the field and just no chance. And a 34 to 31 lead as Carolina goes back on top on a 45 yarder to Ted Ginn Jr. That must have felt like an eternity dropping out of the ceiling here at the Superdome. Panthers up three. This game is sponsored by Papa John's, the official pizza sponsor of the NFL. Well, a big one to Ted Ginn Jr., who dropped one earlier. This one he just had to wait for. Wait till you see the throw that Cam Newton makes from the position that he's in. Just a flick, flat-footed. So impressive as the Saints will start from the 20 down three. Yeah, I don't think anybody questions Cam Newton's arm strength. If they do, then all they got to do is watch this. He, he launches this off his back foot about 55 yards in the air. And going back to what happened, yeah, Anthony trying to run underneath it. But here's Kyle Wilson. He's playing backside. And with nobody releasing this way, he's got to get back and help. And, He's not able to, and that's who the coaches were talking to when they came off the field as to why there was a breakdown. Ted Ginn, he knew he's just cradling this one. <laughs> he was he was not going to drop that ball. Starting from the 20 down by three. Down goes Breeze, and it's Thomas Davis back near the 10. Wow, Thomas Davis, he, they're, they're off play action. He's blitzing. It's a run blitz, but he sees that Breeze keeps it, and he just has a free run. 
pretty big hit there. Sack number five on the year for Thomas Davis. We've had three lead changes in this game, and each team has had a double-digit lead. The lead is three. It's second and 19. Just got it away. Here's one for Watson. Pass picked off. Another one for Coleman. That's number six for Kurt Coleman. And the ball just finds number 20 for Carolina. That's four straight games with an interception for Kurt Coleman. And what a year he is having. He's playing middle safety, and I don't know exactly what Drew Brees sees, but he goes to the middle of the field, and then the Brees is trying to throw a deep post right where he's at. So a throw that really gets away from him, but even if he had thrown it where Ben Watson would have had an opportunity, they weren't going to make a play. Just an excellent job defensively, and Kurt Coleman with another interception. Mentioned earlier, a big pickup by Dave Gentleman, the general manager of the Panthers. A good two-year deal. He's been a nice find. But it's a nice find inside a defense that's well coached and works. Saturday, the final round of the Franklin Templeton shootout. Can't wait for that. Names like Zach Johnson and Matt Kuchar and Graham McDowell. It all starts at 1 Eastern, only on Fox and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. That's from down in Naples. Well, Breeze can't be happy with what he's seeing there. You talk about Kurt Coleman and Sean McDermott, the defensive coordinator. They were together in Philadelphia. Coleman knows this scheme, knows the system. It's been a great pickup, and he has played as so many of these guys have. You don't get to 11-0 without a lot of great performances. Pass is caught by Olsen. Can't reach for the first down. He's a yard short. Third and one coming. Greg Olsen, what a steal he was. And that was Marty Herney, who was the general manager. He was a GM from 02 through October of 2012, and he's responsible for drafting Cam Newton, Josh Norman, Thomas Davis, Ryan Khalil traded for Greg Olson, hired Ron Rivera. It's a tremendous resume by Marty Herney. Third down and one. Pass is incomplete. Newton had Olson all alone, and the throw just died on him. Yeah, boy, he's. Cam Newton knows that this should have been an easy conversion for a first down and keep this drive going. And it's one that he pulls, and Olsen just not able to make a play. And, you know, when I look at the Carolina Panthers, Joe, that's the one thing, as good as Cam has been this year, he makes a lot of plays, that when you get into the playoffs against teams that are just as talented, you got to be able to hit on those kinds of plays to close teams out. Jarris Bird is waiting for the punt, a fair catch. Hauled in just outside the 10, so Drew Brees gets it right back. Down by three, under 10 to go. Go back to 1972. The perfect season for the Miami Dolphins and Don Chula, 17-0. 14-0 during the regular season. Don quoted saying, I'd like to see the Panthers do it. That would make me so proud if that happened. Why his son might be offensive coordinator. Former quarterbacks coach as well for Cam Newton when he came into the league and head coach at Alabama's flags fly. Illegal use of the hands, hands to the face, number 93, defense. Five-yard penalty is added to the end of the run. Automatic. First down. Look at Kyle Love right there in the middle of the screen with a hand up under the face mask of Andrus Pete. I know that Don Shula would sure be proud with his son going undefeated. I don't know that Mercury Morris would, <laughs> would be proud. They like to pop that champagne every year. Well, head coach for Carolina, Ron Rivera, was part of a team that was chasing that down back in 1985. That yeah, was Don Shula's Dolphins that knocked them off. Breeze to the sideline. He's got Cooks, who's got a first down. 
85 Super Bowl champs were 12 and 0, lost to Miami on a Monday night. Mike Ditka and some of the Bears said that refocused them. They went on to win it all. This team, the Carolina Panthers, trying to get to 12 and 0 here, leading by three. Their defense on the field on first down, pass caught, Cooks again. He is good for six. Well, what we've seen in this game is really Josh Norman. He goes with the team's best wide receiver each week. That week, or that guy this week is Brandon Cooks. And but when he goes to the slot, Norman does not go with him. So they've started to put Cooks in the slot. They'll work him a little bit there. They motion him as we've seen. And if they're not man, Norman's not going with him. They get the one-on-one -on -one matchup then with Ben Wickery. But they've gotten Cooks more involved here in this second half. Cooks now across from a linebacker. Pressure on Breeze, gonna run, first down and more. Got a good block along the way, and he slides down with a first down at the 48. Well, everybody locked up here, he's pulling out, and then once there's some room, no eyes are on the quarterback. As Breeze gets up inside the pocket, he realizes that and takes it for a nice game. Season-long 12-yard carry by Drew Brees. No quit in these Saints. Toss to Ingram left side. Good blocking out on the edge, and he spins for another first down. Went around Kirk Coleman on his way to a 13-yard carry on that toss. That's just good, tough running there by Mark Ingram. And, and you called it, Joe. I mean, the Saints are are really showing what they're made of and they've had a lot of opportunities here in this second half to kind of shut it down but they haven't they've continued to battle continue to fight back and make plays when they've had them there's still plenty of time in this game pass is caught near the 20 by Manawanui. Illinois Mike, as they used to call him. He is a tough, big tight end. He's good for 19. Yeah, not a guy that they really throw the ball to all that much. Primarily a blocker. They were able to pick him up from the Patriots in the trade earlier in the year. Makes a tough catch in traffic. That's his longest of the year, and that's nine different receivers. Hit by Breeze, easily inside field goal range. Blitz, Saints pick it up. Ingram out of the backfield. Near another first down. And they're gonna give it to him at the nine. It's first and goal. Well, they got this defense reeling a little bit. They get Ingram in the flat. Keekley is the guy in coverage. This is a heck of a drive right now by the Saints offense. different receivers three touchdowns 252 yards and a chance here for the lead Number four of this game. That's a job that Brandon Coleman does on the outside. He's able to make a key block. Mark Ingram makes a guy miss, and then it's just smooth sailing all the way to the goal line. Excellent work by the Saints offense and finishing the drive off with a touchdown. Wow. Ingram scared the wits out of that poor woman down behind the end zone as he fired it against the wall. Touchdown is good. After the play is over, on sportsmanlike conduct, number 22, the offense. That 15 yard penalty will be assessed on the kickoff. That's against Ingram, and it may be because of this. There's the woman down back behind the end zone, right over the head of the photographer to her left. <laughs> and she was like, 
Wow. Well, that photographer got a nice shot. And Ingram got a penalty. I don't know about the penalty. I don't I I'd be anxious to see that with, one called with Mike Pereira. Unless like we missed something that happened after that. The lead is four. And Cam Newton is going to have to go back to work. What a game this is. Aaron Andrews, what do you got? Well, we have the Carolina Panthers, the only undefeated team here in the NFL. And how about in the NBA? Steph Curry, reigning NBA MVP, leading the Golden State Warriors, who have won 21 straight. He is a huge Charlotte fan. Well, he's from Charlotte, huge Carolina fan, born and raised in Charlotte. Of course, his father, Del Curry, Played for the Hornets. A lot of these guys on the Panthers went to that game this week. Cam was telling me he had a chance to meet up with Steph after the game. They, I did ask, who do you think will lose first? He said, because I am quite the competitor. I think that's going to be the Warriors. We'll have to see, guys. Yeah, Steph Curry, will. by the way, I will say this. Sorry to interrupt. He believes also the Warriors will lose first. And since the Super Bowl is being played in Santa Clara, Steph Curry has said we do have a day off that day. So I'd love to see the Panthers in town. Aaron, thank you. The kickoff will be returned, maybe, eventually, Whitaker. And after the penalty, Whitaker, the slow start. And now he's got a good return. Flag flies late in the return by Fozzie Whitaker. Sometimes you see that when a kickoff is dropped, it kind of throws the timing off. And Whitaker had a 38-yard return, but there was a penalty flag in the middle of it, and it's against Carolina. Return, holding, receiving team number 21. 10 yards from the spot of the foul, first down. What a job Luke Walton by the way, is done stepping in for Steve Kerr, head coach of the Golden State Warriors. And there's the penalty. They called it against Teddy Williams. And instead of starting at midfield down by four, they're going to start at their own 25. Second game in this home and home between the Panthers and the Saints in Carolina. 859 yards against the Saints this season. The trailing here by four. Protection. Pass broken up. Browner with a coverage. No flag as Ted Ginn got up looking for one. Second and ten. Yeah, they have Brandon Browner locked up on Ginn again and with the dig route. Excellent coverage there. Maybe contact on that left shoulder with the left hand. But one of his better plays in coverage when we've seen him locked up. We're one on one again. Down here at the bottom. He's got a first down. Just a flick of the wrist by Cam Newton. And Ginn flashing across the middle, good for 13. Now I think Cam Newton and, and Mike Shula, the offensive coordinator, when they see the one-on-one, -on -one, if they've got a pass called, that's where they're going to work. And if it's a foot race between Ted Ginn and really anyone, Ted Ginn is, is one of the fastest guys in our game. And it looks like Newton's looking for who's ever across from Browner. On first and ten. Passes high and hot for Tolbert. Incomplete. Sean Payton has to be pleased. That's a reflection of a head coach. They've lost three in a row. They are out of it in 2015. They have trailed multiple times in this game at one point by double digits. Now leading by four, trying to knock off the undefeated Panthers. It looks like New Orleans may be bringing it here. Here they come. Newton runs right through it. 
runs into the umpire right in the middle of the field. And it'll bring up third down. The umpire is Fred Bryant. He got a face full of Cam Newton on a five yard run. Well, this was a design quarterback draw the entire way. The outside receivers are blocking. Everybody is. And you know, if you can get past that first wave, you've got a chance. With the man coverage and no safety help, I'm a little surprised Newton didn't check out of the run. Sean Payton is livid on the sideline. Third down and five. This one for Ginn. Pass is dropped again, but a flag is thrown. And Ginn dropped another. There's a hold call in the secondary. Uh, this is right there. It's against Bird, but here's another one off the hands of Ginn. Yeah, this one, you know, he's trying. This is not, that's a heck of a play. If he's able to haul that one in, you know, you try to lay out. Not, not an easy holding. Defense number 31. Five-yard penalty. First down. They get Jarris Bird with the contact. It allows them to get the first down. But, you know, we're seeing why the Saints have had issues this season in coverage. They've given up a lot of big plays, a lot of yardage, and we've seen a lot of a lot of opportunities as Sean Payton just not happy over there. Well, they had 12 guys again in the huddle. That's why he came sprinting down the sideline. That's happened three times in this game that we've seen. Quick throw, Brown. Into Saints territory. Well, Kyle earlier Wilson on the stop. Yeah, earlier in the game when they had 12 guys and he called the timeout, they went back and looked at it. And there's, it wasn't reviewable as Mike Pereira's, Pereira said. You know, Sean Payton let the officials know then that that was the second time, and, and he's he's telling them you got to pay attention to this. It's happening too often, and they've missed it. They've missed it every time. Newton has his arm hit, incomplete. The reason having 12 men in the huddle is a big deal. Let's see who got his hand on Newton. It looks like the left hand of Kevin Williams got there. It dropped untouched. Third down is because defenses put their personnel out there based on who's in the huddle. And that's why Olsen was looking for a flag on Vaccaro. We've seen another missed penalty here. Third down and five. Newton going to run it all the way, and he's brought down from behind. It's fourth down. Brought down by Kikaha. And now a decision for Ron Rivera. Well, similar situation. He went for it there in the first quarter. It's fourth down. Newton looks like he got up in some pain. I think there's no question you, you, you go for it here. It's a little longer than what it was, but it, you know, I'm surprised, Joe, on third down there. They got one on one with Brandon Browner. He gives a cushion. You take a hitch route, you got it. Instead, they try running Cam Newton. They got it here, too, if they want it. It's a hit high on Newton, who had his neck bent back. Now out to his left on fourth down, flips it. Caught by Olsen. The catch at the 30. And Newton waited for as long as he could, flipped it at the end, and just barely got it to Greg Olsen. Yeah, Greg Olsen, he's able to make a play on this and keep this drive alive for the Carolina Panthers. Two-minute warning in New Orleans. Well, the Saints have challenged it. And here's what they're challenging. Olsen makes the grab, is going to the ground in the act of the catch. He rolls over. The ball will escape that right arm for a moment. Question is, did it touch the ground when it did? Looks like a clean catch there. 
against the body the rollover but it comes out at the very end on a fourth and four it was ruled a 16 yard completion and this may give the best look we'll get the call here in a moment after reviewing the play the ruling on the field stands will be a first down New Orleans is charged a timeout and a challenge it is a two minute warning Sean Payton is still on fire because of the officiating here in this game. Mike, is that what you saw back in L.A.? Yeah, I, here's what I know when they look at it. The ball did not come out when he hit the ground. He rolled completely over, and then the ball, he's got it tucked in, and then the ball came out after that. There's always an end of the process, and they look at that as being and here he got control of the ball before the tip hit the, the hit the ground and he maintained that control so they were right to stay with the call. Okay good. It's an unbelievable catch by Greg Olson a, a ball that even with Cam Newton under pressure you know, didn't need to be that difficult but for him to be able to come back and make a play on a low throw on fourth down to keep this drive alive that's a heck of a job on his part. And I say good because the last thing you want coming out of this is more controversy on a catch non catch talked about Roman Harper and what he wrote in the Peter King column the fiery coach he is fiery today we welcome in a new audience this has been some kind of game here in New Orleans right now the Saints lead by four there have been four lead changes each side has led by double digits at one point New Orleans led 14 to nothing early you know the story with Carolina they are 11 and 0 trying to go to 12 and 0 they have a first down at the Saints 30 Saints have lost their last three they're four and seven and out barring the miraculous of playoff contention. Newton pass caught Cotchery spins his way inside the 20 with a Carolina first down. Well what we're seeing a lot of is just man to man safety in the middle for the Saints defensively. Dennis Allen's just saying this is what we've got to do and so Carolina just taking advantage of some of those looks. Inside the red zone are the Panthers. Tenth play of the drive. Got a yard and a half. And a timeout is taken by the Saints. They're out of timeouts. Here's a recap. We'll see what the truck picks. Funches with a touchdown here late. Cam Newton at one point was checked inside for a hit to the head. Drew Brees and these Saints keep firing. As we said here early, no team, despite the record, wants to come in here and take on Drew Brees in his house. Answers on each side. Here's the go-ahead touchdown by Ingram. But this, if you're just joining us on fourth and four, a 16-yard completion that barely got to Greg Olson. He rolled over with a catch of first down. Now it's second and nine. Greg Olson in this game, nine catches, 129 yards. His great year continues. Second and nine. Newton, end zone. Touchdown, Katsuri. And the Panthers go back on top. 15 yards on another laser from number one. It's a great job by Cam Newton. He wants to work the flat route to his left. Brandon Browner was in coverage, and he sees it, doesn't like the look, goes through his progression, comes back to Jericho Cotchery, who ran an outstanding route up the seam, 
that gave Cam Newton a place to go with the football. Look at the route. He leans it to the right like he's going to the post, and as he snaps it, or to the corner, and as he snaps it to the post, it creates the separation. But still time for Drew Brees. No timeouts. Trailing by three with a minute five remaining. And for Cam Newton, he ties his career high. Five touchdown passes here in this one. Well, you see the flat route and the job that Cam Newton does initially when it's taken away. That's where he was going to go with the ball. It's not there. He doesn't like it. But hangs with his progression, comes back to the inside receiver to the post. And that's just good work. We've seen Cam miss a couple throws here today. But with the game on the line, down four and needing to make a play, he comes through as he has all year long. He keeps answering critics. Does it with his legs. He has been brilliant with his arm. A minute five remaining, and now the perfect season for the Carolina Panthers rests with the defense, which is probably exactly as Ron Rivera wants it, even though it's been a pretty big offensive day for Drew Brees and company on the other side. And I tell you, Cam Newton, you know, his numbers, people want to poke holes in his numbers, and they're not gaudy like some. His fourth quarter efficiency this season has been off the charts. There have been four fourth quarter lead changes in this game. The first time these two teams played, it was week three in Carolina. Keekley did not play. Drew Brees did not play. And the game, in essence, ended with just over a minute to go on an interception by Josh Norman in front of Brandon Cooks to seal a five-point win for Carolina. One of their close calls as they've compiled this 11-0 record. Well, I'll tell you what, even though New Orleans does not have a timeout, a minute and five, you just need a field goal to tie this thing up. There is plenty of time. This game's a long way from being over. Breeze throws, pass is incomplete. Now the challenge is you've got to do it against one of the game's best defensive units. We talked to Ron Rivera yesterday, and he talked about why they're so good at tackling and forcing turnovers. It's Kai Forbath, who hit his career-long 57-yarder last week at Houston. That means getting the ball to the 39-yard line of Carolina. Second and 10. This is Watson, first down. But they have to hurry, no timeouts. Luke Keekley, he's directing that defense, getting them lined up, matching what Drew Brees is doing offensively. Keekley can't get home, got blocked by Ingram, passes caught. That's Cooks in midfield. And now we'll see if Brees clocks it. Under 30 to go. Let's go back to that catch by Cooks. Well, first you got Mark Ingram who comes over and he's able to get enough of Keekly to where he's not able to get there. It frees up a place for Drew Brees to step up into the pocket and then he finds Cooks. And we've seen Mark Ingram now make some really key blocks in pass protection. And that's good work there. The ball right at midfield. You only need 11 yards from this spot to bring about a 57-yard try. They want more than that. Breeze comes underneath incomplete. Keekly with coverage on Ingram. This is a good tackling team and a turnover forcing defense by Carolina, something they work on every Wednesday. As you look at Kai Forbath, and this defense is trying to keep Forbath from having a well, chance. What Forbath and this field goal unit's got to be prepared for. If they catch the ball and it's in bounds, clock's running, they got to be ready to get out on the field and try to kick a field goal to tie this thing up. Pass is nearly picked off after it went through the hands of Brandon Coleman. Finnegan, who was just added this week, was back there but could not make the catch on the deflection. Yeah, this is going to be tight now. 
With just 15 seconds left in this game, I don't think there's enough time to complete one inbounds and get your field goal unit onto the field, and that's assuming that they can get it in position to even give them a chance. Well, right now it's fourth and ten. So they have to get the first down. And a timeout will be taken by Carolina. Charge timeout. Carolina. The second. Give you another look at the NFC South. Carolina is the only undefeated team left as we play here in week 13. The former Chicago Bears linebacker, Ron Rivera, the steady hand in charge of the Carolina Panthers, has his defense out there trying to make one stop here on fourth down to go to 12-0. Well, you drew Breeze, it's fourth down and 10, and you know, you're thinking that you've got to work the sideline somehow. You've got to get the first down, and somehow you got to be able to get this clock stopped. up with Norman against Cooks and Norman was right there and they they gave him one on one I mean as they do they put their best corner opposite him one on one they play one on one to the field with Brandon Coleman and you know if you trust that your guy can win you've got a chance on a comeback route to catch it and get out of bounds instead Sean Payton decides he's going to try to take a shot down the field and challenge their best corner and Josh Norman as he was week three as he has been all year long was up for the challenge Carolina's 12 and 0 Ron Rivera is in charge of the ninth team in NFL history to start 12 and 0 six of those teams advance to the Super Bowl four one at all Cam Newton the roll continues the winning touchdown to Jericho Kachery. OT presented by Lowe's coming up. A big win for Carolina by three. <laughs> 